Well, hello, everybody from around the world. Um, I'm Wachink Betopa, uh, which translates in Lakota as Four Arrows. My Irish name is Don Trent Jacobs. Um, and uh, Darsha and I are going to give you an overview of what we think is the probably only way, and, and, I, and I, I, I hesitate to ever use the word only because alternatives and diversity are, are so much a part of the indigenous worldview. But I really believe that worldview, as we'll show, is so fundamental that if we don't return to the worldview that we practice for a long time, we're going to uh, stay in trouble. So that's what we're going to talk about. And uh, um, I uh, am a, a, a professor at Fielding Graduate University and uh, author of a, a number of, of books um, on indigenous world worldview applications and in our lives. Um, I uh, am of Irish uh, ancestry based on family stories from County Kildare and uh, based on again, family stories. Uh, we have Cherokee heritage from a young lady who escaped from the Trail of Tears and was adopted uh, by our, my, my, the Caldwell family. So um, I'm a maid relative of the Oglala Lakota, one of the seven sacred ceremonies, and have fulfilled my Sundance vows there. So I'd like to introduce my co-author and, uh, and, and sister, Darcia Narvaez. Hi, everyone. Uh, good to be with you. Uh, my uh, background is, at least this uh, most recent career, has been in psychology, educational psychology, developmental psychology at the University of Notre Dame. In my uh, background, I'm coming to you from the land of the Pokagon Band of the Potawatomi, and formerly of the Miami in Indiana, United States. And I have come to the indigenous worldview through science and through my own uh, uh, intuitions and inclinations because I have Puerto Rican heritage, which means I have Taino blood. I have uh, Spanish blood, Jewish blood, uh, also, um, Arab and um, German as well. So I'm a mixture. I'm a world uh, mutt, I suppose. Uh, and that makes me interested and sensitive to try to integrate uh, what our uh, humanity means. And so I study what, what's gone wrong with humanity and how to get back to uh, living sustainably and uh, with respect to the earth so that's why I'm here with the Indigenous Worldview and Four Arrows. I'm very appreciative of having uh, found him as a brother. So our uh, wisdom uh, that the Indigenous perspective provides is ancient. It uh, represents 99% of our experience as a genus, as a human genus. We've been here about 6 million years, our uh, species about 2 million. And over that time, this kind of wisdom was really guiding uh, our ability to survive, thrive, reproduce, and exist across generations. And it really is rooted in the natural law as opposed to laws uh, made by human beings, which began uh, uh, around 9,000 years ago, probably in Sumeria was probably the first real examples um, to where we sort of separated ourselves from, from nature and uh, separated ourselves from the way nature works, which we can refer to as a gift economy, as opposed to the kinds of uh, economics that we are now experiencing and, and knowing that it's been uh, detrimental to our, our world. Uh, third, our, uh, this indigenous perspective, we, we also call it the kinship worldview, fosters thriving. We can see that now through Western science and we can see it from uh, our ancient um, experiences and stories and evidence that it uh, really promotes the flourishing of all, not just human beings, but of the bio community. 
I'm just reminded, Darsha, that uh, we have this study of 13,000 years in the Amazon rain basin of the indigenous people that live there um, with, you know, the conclusions from the scientists that have studied it, that the humans had a very significant impact on the land, uh, as do uh, birds and, and other animals. That's, that's part of the deal, right? We were all interrelated, but no extinctions uh, during that time are, are, are problematics of um, loss of biodiversity and all the things that we're we're doing now and uh, and and not a bunch of naked people just kind of in small bands huge uh, uh, cities bigger than anything in Europe at the time so we've got a lot to learn about that idea and and so um, this idea of embodiment the embodiment of all uh, this sense of being one with 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 nature and uh, knowing that we have this this ability to thrive and, and flourish and and get through difficulties by our interconnectedness. And so the indigenous perspective, uh, the worldview honors our holism, our uh, body, heart, mind, and spirits, and fosters their flourishing, their potential. Uh, rather than just picking one or another or ignoring one or another. And we talk about this idea of relationships and reciprocity as, as fundamental to the ways people survived and, and thrived. You know, we opened up with talking a little bit about our, our ancestry and, and, and blood. That really was not such an important thing. Uh, people were who they were based on their relationship to the particular land that they were in. All the languages were in relationship to the land. They were, uh, for the most part, especially with the matriarchal uh, matrilineal societies, uh, very open to meeting others and, and, and getting engaging with others. But uh, with that understanding that the relationship to their land was, was something that they had wisdom about and that others could only introduce. So, um, you know, we don't really worry about blood, blood quantum. In fact, that's sort of a, a way to divide and conquer. Another aspect of indigenous wisdom or indigenous uh, worldview is that virtue is fostered from the bottom up, from the way you raise children in what I call the evolved nest. And it's maintained though also through the ceremony and practices and rituals and ways of being from the top down so that everyone essentially is nested throughout life after having been raised to have a very well-functioning neurobiology and brain and social emotional intelligence. So I, everything that we can learn, we learn in kindergarten, the idea, I just so believe that the first five years is really so crucial. And yet, how do we get parenting to be able to do that kind of nesting? Um, uh, one of the ways is with what I call the cat-fawn connection, which is to use four of the worldview precepts, fear, authority, words, and nature, which is the fawn. And looking at the way our indigenous uh, ancestors understood fear, authority, words, and nature, and seeing how different it is and what problems that we have relate to uh, our dominant way of looking at those four things. And then using concentration activated transformation, a form of self hypnosis, or at least a phrase to describe self hypnosis, to be able to actually change our, our brains so that we can begin to uh, embrace this other alternative. So balancing and rebalancing ourselves, our relationships with one another as human beings and with the natural world are really ongoing uh, because we easily get off balance by uh, some of the decisions or actions we take as human beings. So let's look at the two worldviews. We all are very familiar with the one on the left, which is part of the dominant culture that really kind of uh, has infused the world's cultures. Uh, it's most of the really explicit characteristics are from the last few hundred years. Although as uh, Four Arrows mentioned, a lot of the roots are from uh, the Sumerian culture, the ancient civilizations where things started to go awry in terms of our relationship with the earth. So on the left side, you can see the dominant culture, the purple here. 
uh, has an orientation that the cosmos is fragmented, disenchanted, amoral. Only humans really matter. They're the ones who have spirit. Uh, humans are the pinnacle of creation or evolution, uh, depending on what you uh, uh, orient to. And the characteristics of the individuals are they're kind of restless, they're homeless, they don't feel at home on the earth. And they try to conform landscapes, everything to some abstract ideals they have in their head, you know, like the green lawn uh, that's about 100 years old. But there's sorts of um, detachment, disconnection from being the part of the earth, uh, but be in, instead of being the head. And because of the kind of uh, undermining of the sense of security in early life, uh, you end up with kind of a a negative sense of self, a kind of absent heart, and you hoard, then you collect, you gather, you consume. So that's more characteristics on, uh, of the, the left orientation, the dominant culture. On the right, you can see the characteristics. These are identified by Robert Redfield, who uh, realized there are really only two worldviews uh, if you look at all the cultures of the world. And the one on the right is the one that we've uh, existed with for most of our existence, 99% of it, where the cosmos is considered unified, sacred, and moral. The capacities to perceive that are well raised uh, in, in uh, nurtured in early life. In this view, the spirit pervades everything that you're mutual, you understand and feel and sense that you're mutually related with everything. Uh, humans are really the younger siblings, uh, have much to learn from the trees, the mosses, uh, the animals. And uh, in this worldview, you feel at home on the earth. You feel place full in a particular place, usually for indigenous uh, peoples. And you fit in with the local landscape because you're part of the bio community as a partner, not as a dominator. And you share the, the generosity and sharing is just part of the gift economy that makes the world go round. We're going to introduce to you uh, 40 worldviews uh, that have been studied by many scholars relating to our dominant worldview and the indigenous worldview. We use 28 uh, in our book. Uh, maybe uh, saving the rest, the, the rest for another book. But I want to introduce the the chart uh, and and those because it's very common for people to see them as a rigid binary because in fact the dominant worldview is considered to be a binary worldview, whereas the indigenous worldview is considered to be a non-binary worldview. That doesn't mean there are not things that are conceived of as opposites like night and day and hot and cold. It means that in those opposites, we do our best to understand the continuum, work towards which one is working uh, and uh, know that we are all in the same boat. And so this chart is not intended as a rigid di a binary, but a true dichotomy that is best viewed as a continuum. And, and, and it's about seeking complementarity and dialogue. So it's not about one is bad and one is good, although we can look and see that when we are having systems that are on the dominant side, it has created uh, a, 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 a bad situation. And so this is this is the way to look at it. And uh, it's important to know that we are making a distinction between um, the, the worldview that all the great diversity of indigenous cultures share and the place based wisdom that they have that is totally unique to to and only re and requires knowing the ceremonies, the language, and uh, living on the land for long enough time to know how the local uh, relationships work. And that's what we need to really work hard at supporting and saving because every day uh, we, we lose ground, we lose sovereignty, we lose languages. And so um, we feel that by everyone becoming uh, in tune with their indigenous worldview, they would be more likely to support indigenous cultures who are struggling against all odds to protect their land and their and gain sovereignty. So we can show the show briefly um, how these interconnected worldview precepts uh, are so important and how if you look at the left side, that's pretty much where we're at. And just as another introduction, this worldview of interconnection and circular effects sentience of the whole planet 
and cooperation among natural systems are really becoming more and more supported by scientific evidence, Western scientific evidence from physics to biology. So we have about uh, two minutes left. And these are the manifestations here of uh, the worldview. And you can just see by looking at it, there's the continuum, for example, just that number one, you know, the Lakota, for example, and most indigenous matriarchies were on, uh, opposed to hierarchy. They knew it caused problems, but sometimes there were, there were changes like in a Buffalo hunt, there would be a, a name, people named to be in charge and different people would be named. So look at these things and look at the left side uh, uh, to see, well, you may feel you're in your heart that you're on the right side, but all the systems that you're operating under, education, corporate, whatever, tend to be on the left side. And this is where we need to do our, our, our work, personal and community and collectively. And you can see that uh, some of the ones that I emphasize is, is the importance of heart, heart-mindedness over the just thinking mind, uh, which is common to all major, uh, I mean, societies around the world emphasize heart-mindedness. And it's the recent dominant view that kind of left out the heart and undermines its development in early life and actually in schooling. So uh, there's a way to get back to that that's central to being a respectful, responsible members of the earth community. Here's the second set. So there are many, many things to contrast from the left side to the right side. Do you want to pick one? Well, we only have about 10 seconds, uh, four arrows. So, No, we just ask if anyone has any questions, you can contact us and uh, we'll, we'll be happy to, to talk more about it. Here are the books that we have, uh, uh, that all the profits go to Native peoples. Uh, and you can see uh, that the right one is uh, the recent one and the left one is an edited volume and more information here from us. Uh, we appreciate having this opportunity to uh, communicate with you and hope that you will look further into the indigenous worldview, which actually undergirds all of philosophy. Uh, uh, the worldview is, is an undergirding uh, foundation for the philosophies that people take up. And remember to see the beauty in, in, in the world uh, no matter how difficult things are, that the water and the trees are still taking responsibility for keeping us alive. And we'd be, be thankful for that. Amen to that.